Sweet. New upload. What? Another PC video. Unsub. If you're waiting on some console related content, I'll be uploading a video on a common yet frustrating reassembly issue on the NES shortly. But in this video, we're dealing with a stark contrast to a video I recently uploaded about building a tiny but expensive gaming PC, which I realize isn't exactly practical. Especially if you're just looking to get into PC gaming. So I wanted to give you a more reasonable option. Now, there are already a lot of videos on YouTube talking about taking one of these older Dell Optiplexes and by simply adding a graphics card, boom, you have a gaming PC. They make it seem super simple, but can it really be that easy? Sure, but I do have a couple of issues with these videos. First, they show you these systems, but then they don't actually tell you anything about them. So maybe you go looking for one only to find a bunch of different models that look exactly the same on the outside, but are actually very different on the inside. And they don't answer the basic question of which one of these is the best one to get. And to answer that, we first have to talk about which ones you should avoid. A lot of these videos will tell you to look at the 790 or 900 series Optiplex, while others will tell you to look at the 3010, 7010, and 9010. These are the reasons I tell you to avoid all of them. Without going into too much detail, they're a bit too old and can provide a subpar gaming experience. The serial ATA ports will block the installation of any GPU over about 8.5 inches in length, and the power supplies are inadequate for any GPU that requires anything more than the 75 watts of power provided by the PCI Express slot. Now if you buy one of these, you'll be stuck choosing between having a longer graphics card or having SATA ports. And while you can replace the power supply, you're really just adding to the cost of the system, negating any potential savings that you got from buying an older model. And in the end, they really cost about the same as the systems I would suggest you look for anyways. Those models being the 3020, 7020, and 9020. These use newer CPUs that are not only relevant for gaming, but other tasks as well. And the serial ATA ports won't block the installation of your graphics card, regardless of the length. They also have higher wattage power supplies. And now we need to talk about what sets each of these models apart, and to do that, we need to get them open. The 3020 side panel has to be unscrewed and pulled back to remove it while the 7020 and 9020 use a simple latch to give you easier access to the guts. Once you get inside, you'll find that all three of these look pretty similar, but there are relevant differences. The first you'll notice is that the 3020 only has two slots for RAM, while the 7020 and 9020 have four. This is because the 3020 uses the H81 chipset, while the 7020 and 9020 use the Q81 chipset. Now, what this all means is, is that the 3020 can have a max of 16 gigs of RAM installed, while the 7020 and 9020 can have a max of 32 gigs installed. Now, the Q81 chipset also has more PCI Express lanes, which means you get two more USB 3 ports, as well as an extra SATA port. Now, neither chipset allows you to overclock, but you can install a K-series CPU in one of these boards. More on that in a second. That brings us to the CPU. And this one's a bit less noticeable because they all use the same heatsink. Now, the 3020 could come with either the i3 or the i5, while the 7020 and 9020 added the i7, though you're less likely to find them with an i3. And like I said earlier, you can't overclock with these, but you can install a K-series CPU. It will work. But the only reason you might do this is because sometimes, K-series CPUs have higher base and boost clocks than their non-K counterparts. Emphasis on sometimes. Also, keep in mind that your CPU choice will determine which graphics card you should use. No matter which model you go with, you're going to get a 290 watt power supply, which will work for any lower wattage GPU, and even some that require dedicated PCI Express power from the power supply, and I'll cover that in a later video. With all three, you're generally going to find power supplies that aren't 80 plus rated, though 80 plus gold was an option on all three models. For some odd reason, the 7020 is the only model where 80 plus bronze was an option because... reasons? Honestly though, I wouldn't stress too much over this because I could make an entire video on why you shouldn't use the 80 plus efficiency rating as some metric of quality, because the two aren't mutually exclusive. And while these power supplies and motherboards use a proprietary 8-pin connector, 
it's easily adapted to use any higher wattage off-the-shelf unit. Next up is the layout of the motherboard. And you'll notice that all of these route the SATA power through the motherboard, which is kind of odd. But the 7020 and the 9020 have that connector up near the main power connector, but the 3020s is down a little bit lower, which will interfere with the installation of GPUs over a certain length. Now, if you have something flimsy like this MSI armor, that's not really a problem. But for anything less flexible, it's going to be in the way and prevent the installation of the GPU altogether. However, this isn't an issue uh, if you plan on replacing the power supply anyways. The last thing worth mentioning is that these come in various sizes. The systems I've been showing you are all mini towers. However, they come in a small form factor as well. The 3020 and 9020 can be found in a micro, and the 9020 can be found in an ultra small form factor. And I tell you, don't bother with any of those. The micro and the ultra small form factor are entirely useless for modern gaming, period. The small form factor's PCI Express slot is right next to the power supply, limiting you to half height single slot cards. Taking all of this into account, I really have a hard time recommending the 3020, unless you find one for a really good deal and plan on replacing the power supply anyways. The SATA power placement is enough to put me off of the 3020 alone. But then you have to take into account that it has two less RAM slots, two less USB ports, one less SATA port, and you're limited to 16 gigs of RAM. And honestly, they cost about the same amount of money as a 7020 or 9020 anyways. And having built in all three, I would just get the 7020 or 9020. They're functionally the same to the point that I'm not even sure why both of them exist and they cost the same amount of money. Now, I do have another problem with those existing videos, and that's price. Now, some of these videos will tell you to buy an outdated system only to have to replace the power supply, negating any potential savings, while others will have you go to Amazon or Newegg and spend three times what you should be spending on one of these. And that's with the idea that you're protected in case something goes wrong. Now, I bought these off of eBay, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise, there are buyer protections in case something goes wrong. And you'll honestly spend a lot less. So, how much should you pay? And is there anything that you need to look out for? If you're looking to build something with an i5, which is good for around a GTX 1060 or RX 480, I would stick to around $110 to $120 for something with eight gigs of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive. If it has 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive, consider going up to about 140. For an i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a one to two terabyte hard drive, you're gonna pay anywhere between 200 and 250 dollars. Now, as for what GPU you can put with that, pretty much anything that makes sense at this budget. Just keep in mind that you're gonna have to replace your power supply. So what about trying to save a little money and go with an i3? Well, for starters, you're not gonna save any money. And second, it's just going to severely bottleneck anything more powerful than, say, a 1050 Ti. Now, even if you're going to go with a lower-end graphics card, I'd still suggest getting at least the i5, because the value just isn't there with the i3. And at least with the i5, you have the option of upgrading your video card, you know, down the road. While shopping for these systems, there are a few things that you need to look out for. First being shipping. Keep your eye on that. The prices that I listed include shipping, and you definitely need to factor that into your total cost. Second is RAM speed. These systems can come with RAM clocked at 1600 MHz as well as 1333 MHz. While there is no difference in price, there is definitely a difference in performance. Some sellers will actually have a picture of the BIOS screen showing the memory speed in the listing. If they don't, it's easy enough to just send them a question and ask. Next. Don't bother with systems that are already coming with an SSD. Those sellers want a huge premium for those. And while an SSD does give a huge boost in overall performance, you can definitely add your own SSD for a lot less money. Now, you can also find these systems that come with a GPU already. These are very low end and I'm not saying, great, you could use this GPU, but you can turn around and sell it and recoup 15 to $25 of your cost. Now, you definitely want to check seller feedback to make sure you're dealing with somebody reputable. Like I said earlier, 
You're protected one way or the other, but at least this way if there is a problem, you can avoid a hassle. Also, look for these locally. There are companies that recycle computers, as well as companies that sell older computers from businesses, schools, and hospitals, where you may find a better deal there than you can online. Lastly, be patient. There are a lot of sellers on eBay that are asking way, way too much for these systems too. You're gonna have to wade through some crap to find that deal. And look for listings that allow you to make an offer. I've gotten a lot of good deals that way, and the worst these sellers can do is tell you no. I really hope that this video has helped clear up any potential confusion that might exist in picking one of these systems up. I also hope this has helped you come to a decision on which one might be the right one for you. In the coming weeks, I'm going to be doing a couple of builds in these to show you what you can do to maximize your price to performance while doing something that I haven't seen anybody on YouTube do yet. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. If you found this video useful, maybe toss it a like or consider subscribing to see future content. Anyhow, thanks for watching and I'll catch you with the next video. The Q81 chipset also has more PCI Express lanes, which gives you two more SATA ports and one more USB 3 port, which you got backwards, you stupid ass. Sweet, a new upload. Another PC video? Unsub. <laughs> ah. Take two.